Well, thank you. I know that uh, most of my listeners know who you are, as I reference you quite a lot. But uh, for those who haven't come across your work, uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself and, and what you do? Sure. So I got into medicine without really knowing what I wanted to do. And I soon realized that I was much more interested in science and understanding why things happen and trying to correct them rather than follow the medical pathway. And it turned out I, I just wasn't going to be very good at spending my life looking after patients. I just That's just not me. Maybe I'm too selfish. I don't know. But I then realized that I was interested in science. And so I, as soon as I'd graduated in medicine and done my internship in the hospital, that really taught me that I wasn't designed to do clinical medicine. And so I went straight into research. And at the time, there were really only one or two options I had to do research. And so I went into heart disease because the prof there was a good friend. We'd become quite friendly on a number of topics, and I really respected him. So I started in cardiovascular physiology, did my PhD in that. And then at the end of the, that, I was appointed as the first sort of junior lecturer in sports science. And they asked me to start sports science at the University of Cape Town, which I did. And then that led to sports medicine, developing sports medicine in South Africa. And I did that for the next 40 odd years <laughs> until, a nine, until 2014, when things changed a bit for me. In 2010, I changed my diet. I, before that, I'd been prescribing the high carbohydrate diet. I wrote the book Law of Running, which promotes a very high carbohydrate diet. And this became a very popular book. And uh, classically, I've been seen tearing the pages out saying, I don't believe this. And anyway, so now I'm rewriting the fifth edition. But that promoted the high carbohydrate diet. And all that happened to me on a high carbohydrate diet was I developed type 2 diabetes. And then I was fortunate to read books on the low carbohydrate diet. I adopted the diet, reversed my type 2 diabetes, and just felt magic and just lost. I felt like 20 years younger. So it was an amazing experience. The consequence of changing my diet was I lost all my funding because the people who were funding me were interested in promoting the plant-based uh, high carbohydrate diet. And they did that obviously for financial reasons. And so I lost all that funding. And then the university turned on me and it basically excommunicated me by saying that by promoting this diet, the low carbohydrate, high fat diet, I was killing people, killing babies and so on. Oh, wow. And so they, they, they turned their back on me, despite the fact that I'd worked there for 40 years and developed this center of excellence. And I'm just going to boast now that I'm the second most cited scientist at the medical scientist at that university. Despite that, they threw me out and uh, tried to humiliate me publicly. And I realized that I had a choice. I could either be humiliated publicly or stand up. Then it turned out, very fortunately, that I tweeted something. And I was reported to the Health Professions Council in South Africa for saying that mothers should wean their babies onto a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet, as we've done for millions of years. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but, of course, people, people don't know the history. So that Anyway, we then went to court for four years. I was in court for 28 days had brilliant support team and in the end we won that and we won the appeal and so i was ha, had been charged for misconduct etc that i was cleared of everything they found nothing wrong i was there were 13 charges and i won all 13 points so so that left me in limbo and fortunately and we'll talk about this i think that a young South African who's now working in America, he'd become interested in the low carbohydrate diet. He said, why don't we start doing some studies? Wouldn't you like to help us? And so I did. And we've now formed over the past six years, we've done some magnificent work that's never been done. Mm -hmm. And we reversed 100 years of teaching in the sports sciences. The evidence is about to break. It's not quite there, but I mean, it's about to be published, but it's it's there. Then I can tell you a bit about it. Mm -hmm. But it's been very exciting. So I got a second career. So here I am 10 years after retiring. <laughs> I'm still as busy as ever. And uh, writing papers, uh, writing this massive review, the first major review I've ever seen of all the evidence of carbohydrate ingestion during exercise. And I've looked at about 500 studies. And when you look at those 500 studies, you can't, you finally get to understand what it's all about. Mm. 
And uh, I think that, and then our research, we could, while we were doing this, while I was preparing that, we were doing the research that we came to the definitive study to see if carbohydrates are important during exercise. And they are, but they're not the way we're taught. So I'm sure we'll get to that. So, so that there's me, medical doctor, expelled from the medical profession back into yeah. science and still pushing the boundaries, I hope, in, in nutrition and sports science. Yeah. Well, I think it, at, um, you know, not to be too, um, you know, glowing and, and, and embarrass you or anything, but I think it takes a lot of integrity to go against your entire body of work and go against the system. You could have just retired and been top of the game, your book selling fine. Everyone just absolutely thinks you're the <laughs> best. And, and you just, just walked off the champ and you said, no, nope, that was wrong. I need to I need to correct the record and and you 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 caught a lot of heat for that and I think it just takes a lot of integrity and and I I just uh so want to congratulate you for that and thank you for that because without your struggles you know we would be you know 10 years behind and and we would be really struggling at this point so I appreciate that. Thanks Andy. You know for me it was really simple because I mean I got diabetes on my own advice. Mm. So here I'm giving this advice and it caused me to get diabetes. So how could I live with myself to let that continue, knowing that this book is ranked as a great book on running? So everyone who picks it up is going to say, well, it's got to be high carbs. Mm. And the probability that they'll get diabetes in the long term is very high. So I couldn't I couldn't live with that. Yeah. And in any case, I mean, I, it changed my life so much. I, I just wish I'd, I was originally high fat, low carbs. Because I was born to British parents in Rhodesia in Zimbabwe, and there were no processed foods when I was born. So we we ate real foods. And my life, my my mother used to feed me offal. Mm-hmm. My my sister and myself, we got fed offal. Mm-hmm. So I was so fortunate. <laughs> How yes. many people, uh, at least now, no one gets fed offal as a child, but I was fed offal. And my mother used to say that meat and fish are what keep, give you brains. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, she was right. so I was very fortunate. And then, so then I go to do my science and I come under the influence of the cardiologists mm-hmm. and they say, no, you can't eat that. You've got to eat margarine and low fat. Yeah. And, and I, I never ran as well again. And yeah. it was so sad because I would have, I had some, I had some great runs in my life, and I had fun, running. I loved running, but it could have been much better mm. if I'd been high fat all the time and not beginning progressively more diabetic during those years. Yeah, 